Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with pasta a la Genovese. That's right, I'm going to show you my take on this incredibly delicious meat sauce, whose name translates to in the style of Genoa, which is kind of interesting since as far as I can tell, this was actually invented in Naples, where it's become one of that city's most popular dishes. But anyway, other than that, the name is totally accurate. And no matter what you call it, is one of the most delicious meat sauces you will ever taste. Not to mention incredibly simple. And I said simple, not fast. But we'll get to that. Let's start off with the simple part. And here are the three major components to this sauce. So what we're going to need is some kind of cured pork, either salt pork or pancetta. And yes, you could use bacon, but that's smoked. And I don't like this smoky. And then besides that, we're also going to need a couple pounds of beef chuck, cut into about two inch pieces. And then last but not least, we need some onions, and a lot of them. As in five or six pounds of onions. In the business, we call that a ton of onion. And not only are these three things the main ingredients, they're almost the only ingredients. And how we'll start this is by transferring our pancetta or salt pork into a pot containing some olive oil. And we will set that over medium heat. And what we're going to do here is cook that stirring until it kind of browns up a little bit. And most of that delicious fat has rendered out. So we will go ahead and cook that, like I said, on medium heat until we get it to just about this point. And once that's been accomplished, we'll use a strainer or some kind of slotted spoon. And we'll go ahead and transfer that into a bowl. And of course, reserve it till needed. And if everything's gone according to plan, we should be left with three or four tablespoons of beautiful rendered pork fat in which we will now brown our chunks of beef. So what we'll do at this point is go ahead and crank our heat up to high and we will transfer our chunks of beef in. And there are two ways you can do this. You could brown this meat in like four or five small batches or you can use my method, which is much faster, much easier and classically completely wrong. But it works great and here's how you do it. Instead of batches, we add all the beef in at once and we season it with salt. And what's gonna happen is this sits on high heat, a lot of liquid's gonna come out of that beef and it's gonna start to boil in its own juices which is not even close to what we want when we talk about browning the meat. But fear not, because what's going to happen over the course of the next, I don't know, 10 or 15 minutes, is that those juices are going to evaporate over that high heat, eventually leaving us with nothing but the meat and the fat. And as soon as all that moisture is boiled off, the meat's going to brown up beautifully. Check it out. And then once that's happened, what we'll do is reduce our heat down a little bit to medium high, and we'll go ahead and dump in our diced carrots and celery, as well as our reserved cooked pancetta, and I'm also going to give it a little bit of freshly ground black pepper and another very generous pinch of salt. And we will stir all that together and cook it for about five minutes. And during that time, those veggies are going to soften up and sweeten up a little bit. And of course, our chunks of beef will continue to brown. And after, like I said, about five minutes on medium high, our mixture should look something like this. And at that point, we can stop and add the rest of the ingredients, which includes a small squirt of tomato paste, as well as exactly one bay leaf, and a nice splash of white wine. And as you well know, anytime we brown meats in a pot and add liquid, it's gonna deglaze the bottom, which is the whole purpose of this step. And by the way, I should mention that this sauce predates the existence of tomatoes in Italy. So traditionally, there are no tomatoes used in this sauce. But having said that, I do like to add a little touch of tomato paste for a little extra flavor and acidity, not to mention it really improves the color, I think. But that's up to you. You are the boss of this virtually unknown meat sauce. But anyway, we're going to cook that stirring for a couple minutes until the bottom's deglazed, at which point we can stop and add our massive amount of sliced onions. Which, please, tell me you've been slicing one or two at a time while the meat was browning. Because that's just smart time management. And as you can see, I'm using a combo of red and yellow onion. But any combination will work. And how we're going to prep these, besides peeling them and cutting them in half, is to make two cuts this way before slicing across as usual. And please, do not waste time trying to be super accurate as these onions are pretty much going to cook down to nothing. And as far as a tip, by far the easiest way to cut five or six pounds of onions at once is to not cut them at once. Okay, so what you want to do is have these near the cutting board, and while you're cooking your pork or browning your beef, every once in a while you walk over and cut an onion up. So yes, that is a ton of onions to slice, but if you space that work out while your meat's cooking, it's not that bad. And then once those are set, we can go ahead and add those to the pot. And as you're about to see, mine just barely fit. And hopefully yours do too, but if they don't, don't worry. Just reserve the onions you can't fit in, and we'll put those in when this cooks down a little. No problem. So we will add, push, and press our onions in. And then what we want to do is turn the heat down to medium, cover that tightly, and let it cook for 30 minutes without touching it. Just let it sit there a half hour, at which point we'll come back over, uncover it, and give it a stir. And you will certainly notice those onions will have softened up and kind of collapsed down into the pot. And what we're going to want to do after giving this a very thorough and thoughtful mixing 
is cover it back up and give it another 30 minutes covered. At which point I'm guessing it should look something remotely similar to this. And we will give that another stir to see where we're at. And as I'm stirring this, I'm sure a few of you are thinking, hey, this has cooked an hour. I bet this is pretty close to being done. Well, not exactly. Because what we're going to do at this point is reduce our heat too low and simmer this, stirring occasionally for about 8 to 10 hours. And no, I'm not kidding. And during that cooking time, you really don't have to do too much except give it an occasional stir, as well as skim any excess fat that comes to the top. And other than keeping an eye on the liquid level, that's pretty much it. Just let it simmer for 8 to 10 hours or until it's done. And usually with this kind of thing, done means the meat is fork tender, but not here. Oh, that's not good enough. This stuff has to simmer and simmer and simmer until the beef and onions kind of melt into each other and become one. And don't worry, that only sounds deep. That just means we're going to cook this mixture until we can't tell the beef from the onions. We want to cook this until the onions and meat break down so thoroughly they become one substance. And after simmering that long, you can probably pretty much tell just by looking at it that it's ready. But of course, you're going to test your work by actually eating some. So I gave mine a little taste. And it was, if I'm being honest, spectacularly delicious. But it did need a little touch of salt, so I added some of that. And once we've determined our sauce is cooked long enough, and we've tested for seasoning, our Genovese meat sauce is done and ready to use. And the amount of sauce this recipe makes is going to be enough for about two pounds of rigatoni. And if I was making that much, I would just boil two pounds and mix this all together, but I'm not. So what I do is make this ahead, and then just heat it up in a pan when you're ready to use it. So that's what you see me doing here. We'll heat up a couple ladles of sauce, to which we will add our slightly undercooked rigatoni, along with a pinch of fresh marjoram, as well as a shake of cayenne. By the way, that was for the ladies. And what we'll do as usual is finish cooking that pasta for the last minute in the sauce, so it soaks in some of those beautiful meaty flavors. And by the way, as usual, if you need to thin the sauce out a little bit, you could add a splash of pasta water. That's you cooking. And then to finish, once it's done, we'll turn off the heat and finish it off with a nice grating of Parmigiano Reggiano. And we'll stir that in. And our rigatoni alla Genovese is done. So we will go ahead and transfer that into a nice hot pasta bowl. And we'll make sure we have plenty of that sauce. And by plenty, I mean probably too much. And we'll finish that out with one last grating of cheese and possibly a little more fresh herb for the pictures, which I took way too many of. But that's okay, I'm a food blogger. But that is why you see me grating on more cheese here, because it did kind of look like it was sitting around a while, which it had. So I gave it a little fresh dusting of cheese before I grabbed a fork and went in. And that, my friends, is probably the best meat sauce you've never heard of. I mean, imagine a cross between like a traditional meat sauce, like a bolognese, and a French onion soup. That's kind of the flavor profile here, only better. I mean, it just has to be experienced to be believed. And by the way, if you're one of these I don't like onions lunatics, please, I beg you, try this. I mean, if you like a meat sauce, I don't know how you wouldn't like the sweetness and incredible savoriness all those onions bring to this dish. So if you don't eat onions, I still hope you give this a whirl. And then, of course, admit publicly you've been wrong all these years. And sure, it takes almost a whole day to cook, and you probably won't be able to eat it till the next day. But don't forget, you also get to slice up five or six pounds of raw onions. So you got that going for you. So I really do hope you give this a try soon. Head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy. Enjoy.